Good morning and welcome to St. Martin of Tours. On this, the first Sunday in Lent, we will begin with the Great Litany. If you're following along in the prayer book, it begins on page 148. O God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. O God the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy upon, upon us. us. O God the Holy Ghost, sanctifier of the faithful, have, have mercy, mercy upon, upon us. us. O holy and blessed and glorious Trinity, one God, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers. Neither reward us according to our sins. Spare us, good Lord. Spare thy people whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood. And by thy mercy preserve us forever. Spare, Spare us, good Lord. From, every, from all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the cracks and assaults of the devil and from everlasting damnation. Good Lord, deliver us. From all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity, good, good Lord, Lord, deliver us. us. From all inordinate and sinful affections, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil, good, good Lord, Lord, deliver us. us from all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of thy word and commandment, good, good Lord, Lord, deliver us. us. From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire, and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine, good, good Lord, Lord, deliver us. us. From all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. Good, good Lord, Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation. Good, good Lord, 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 deliver us. us. By thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, and by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost, good, good Lord, Lord, deliver us. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, good, good Lord, 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 deliver us. us. We, seech ye, we sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy holy church universal in the right way. We, we beseech thee to, to hear us, us, good Lord. That it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. We, we beseech thee to, to hear us, us good Lord. Lord that it may please thee to bless and keep all thy people. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to send forth laborers into thy harvest, and to draw all mankind into thy kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give to all people increase of grace to hear and receive thy word, and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give us a heart to love and fear thee, and diligently to live after thy commandments, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy and walk in the ways of truth. 
we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world, to give to all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. We beseech thee to hear us, hear us good Lord. That it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give and preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings, to do the work which thou give us to do with singleness of heart as thy servants and for the common good. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or travel. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth young children and orphans, the widowed, and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to support help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to have mercy upon all mankind. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. That it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances and to endue us with the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to grant to all the faithful departed eternal life and peace. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to grant that in the fellowship of Martin of Tours and all the saints, we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. O Christ, hear us. O Christ, hear us. Have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Continuing on page 357. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 
A reading from Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 25, verses 1 through 9. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are the everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. A reading from 1 Peter. Christ suffered for sins once for all, the, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the, in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We pray for those who preach and those who hear God's word today. Gracious God, help me to preach in a way that is good news to the poor, the weak, the widowed, the orphaned, those who are most vulnerable. Help me to preach in a way that honors and respects those who suffer and die this day for your gospel. Help me to preach in a way. This seeks not my glory, but yours, not the growth of this church, but the spread of your kingdom. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last year, I began my sermon for the first Sunday of Lent this way. It has dominated the headlines all week. We think we know where and when it started. We see how it is spreading. Each day we wonder with frightening awe just how far and how fast it will spread. We wonder how dangerous it will be. How will it disrupt our lives? What impact will it have on the life of our friends and family? Can we prevent it? How? How long will it take before a vaccine is developed? Will it infect? Will it kill someone I love? Will I be a victim? I continued. Coronavirus. Everything is affected from politics to the stock market to vacation plans. It impacts how we travel, where we gather for entertainment. It even impacts how we worship. I wondered, should we change the way we worship? Should we drink from the common cup? Should we share a sign of peace? I urged caution. I said, if you're not feeling well, stay home. Cover your mouth when you sneeze. Wash your hands, use sanitizer. Let's be careful. Let's not overreact, but let's not underreact. In the weeks to come, we will make decisions as the reality of the situation unfolds. I had no idea 
We had no idea. At worst, we imagined that it would all be over in a few weeks. Certainly, I hoped, at least by Easter. But it wasn't over by Easter. It wasn't over by Pentecost or Mother's Day or Father's Day or Labor Day or Thanksgiving or Christmas or New Year's. And now here we are. Once again, nearly a year later, the first Sunday of Lent. Last year, the first Sunday of Lent began with a reading from chapters two and three of Genesis. The reading spoke of the disobedience of Adam and Eve, the first sin, the beginning, if you will, of the plague of sin. I thought my sermon was pretty clever. The plague, the infection, the pandemic of sin. And of course, there was a cure, right? The vaccine. The way to stop the spread of sin was to follow the way of Jesus. If we follow his way, if we follow him through this season of Lent, we will find and celebrate the healing, the new life, the resurrection of Jesus. If only it would have been that easy. This year, the Hebrew scripture reading is from chapter 9 of Genesis, the ending of the story of the flood. And that saga, the sin that infected the world through the disobedience of Adam and Eve has spread relentlessly. In that story, all creation has been infected. We hear that God grieves. The heart of the creator breaks as he looks upon the earth that he has formed. The creator regrets giving life to the world. And the creator reacts. In the story, the creator becomes the destroyer. The waters of chaos are unleashed and flood the earth. All that is spared is the family of Noah and animals of every kind. In our reading today, the flood waters of chaos and destruction have receded. Those, creature, those creatures that survived the flood have left the ark. One can only imagine the devastation that they behold. One can only imagine the smell of filth and decay and death. We can only imagine the trauma they are feeling because of all that they have been through and all that they now see. To Noah, to his family, and to every living creature on earth, God makes a promise, a covenant, if you will, that never again will God send waters of chaos to destroy the earth. It seems that perhaps the devastation God sent upon the earth traumatized God's very self as well. God lays down his bow. God lays down the symbol of his devastating destructive power as a sign of his promise. In the days to come, when humankind sins again, which they surely will, when the plague of sin again infects the earth, which it surely will, 
in the days to come when humankind deserves punishment and death, God will look upon the bow that has been laid aside and God will remember the promise God has made to Noah and every living creature. Never again would God punish with destruction. Never again. Most certainly, through the centuries of history, humankind did not learn any lesson from the devastating waters of the flood. Humankind continued to sin. Evil continued to rule the earth with death and destruction. But God still remembered and kept the covenant that God had made with Noah, with Noah and all living creatures. Never again. Then in the fullness of time, God actually came to earth. Jesus, God incarnate, revealed the true, full nature of God. God reve Jesus revealed the God who comes armed, not with a bow, not with a sword. And Jesus, God comes armed with power of truth, the power of righteousness, the power of mercy, and the power of love. Our gospel for the first Sunday of Lent is always a story of the temptation of Jesus. Mark's story is powerful in its stark simplicity. The Spirit of God comes upon Jesus at his baptism, and the Spirit immediately throws Jesus into the desert. There in the desert, we hear the first of many encounters that will occur between Jesus and the evil one. Jesus survives that test. And then after John is arrested, Jesus comes with this proclamation of good news. The time is now. The epic battle between good and evil has begun. And the good news is this. Jesus has faced the test. Jesus has been and will be victorious over the evil one. The struggle with Satan that began in the wilderness will reach its climax when Jesus rises victorious from the dead. Friends, when we began Lent last year, we had no idea what lay before us. <laughs> Most of us had never used the word pandemic. Since then, so much has happened. The killings of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Ahmaud Arbery. The mass protests that followed through the country. the economic collapse, the division before the election, the insurrection and impeachment trial that followed it, and now crippling deadly winter storms. And each of our families has faced our own personal sufferings and challenges. Our churches have struggled. Our bishop has been suspended. It feels as if we have stepped out of an ark. We behold a devastated planet. It still feels like we're in the midst of trauma. But there is hope. God has set aside God's bow. 
the covenant God made with Noah and all living creatures still holds. God has set the bow in the sky as a sign of that covenant. God has come in Jesus, the new and everlasting covenant. God has conquered the evil one. The cross is one sign of that covenant. And soon, very soon, we will share fully again in the bread and wine, the food and drink of that everlasting covenant. My friends, in past years, my early Lenten sermons have always invited people to enter more fully into the season of repentance by confessing their sinfulness. I have invited them to symbolize their repentance through acts of fasting, prayer, and giving alms. My friends, this year, I invite you to see this season not primarily as a time of repentance, but see it as a time of hope. In the covenant with Noah, God promised to lay down his wrath. In the covenant revealed in Jesus, God has promised us resurrection. This year, in this holy season, we hold and treasure this hope. May this hope inspire us through the season of Lent. May this hope inspire us to live in the fullness of time to live the fullness of the good news. Life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may we be blessed by our God who always creates, redeems and sanctifies. Amen. Let us affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed, page 358. We believe in, in one God, God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people this week are Form 1, found on page 383 of your prayer book. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, for the Church of the Province of Central Africa. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, for Grace Church, Long Rapids, and St. Peter's by the Lake, Montague. In St. Martin's cycle of prayer, for Gabriel, Lori, Kathy, Steve, Amanda, Marcus, Atticus, and Bill. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for the standing committees of the dioceses of Western and Eastern Michigan, for the Reverend, Right Reverend Gladstone Adams III, currently serving as consulting bishop for both dioceses, for Bonnie Rayford and Moises, the bishops of our companion diocese, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and for Craig, the bishop of this area's synod of the ELCA, for the diocesan canons missioner, Alan, Val, and Anne, for this gathering and for all priests and deacons, especially the clergy associated with this parish, Mary, Pat, Rick, Mike, and Bill, for those discerning vocations to our ordained or lay ministry, for Trish, our deacon in training, for our vestry, and for all those seeking a deeper knowledge of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Joseph, our president, and Gretchen, our governor, for the leaders of all nations, and for all in authority, give them wisdom and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For Kalamazoo County, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve and protect us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Wayne, Dana, and their family as we hold them in love. For those on our prayer list, Karen, Charlotte, Gabriel, Jenny, Penny, Shirley, Jenna, Sean, Margie, Carol Ann, Christopher, Jeff, Jan, Tom, Mike, Barb, Barbara, Deb, Curly, David, Michelle, Michael, Ken, Sarah, Jim, Bud, and RJ. For those recently diagnosed with breast cancer that have asked for our prayers, Barbara, Mary, June, Marilyn, Virginia, Brenda, Clara, Dolores, Gatha, Heather, Mary, Sally, Tracy, Ilda, Patricia, Valerie, Arlene, Janice, and Shirlene, and for those we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. For the aged and infirmed, and for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, and for all those who have no one to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have lost their lives and many people who are still missing as part of a Himalayan glacier broke off and crashed through a dam in northern India. For all those without a home in this deadly cold and for all people and agencies working to help keep them safe and find temporary housing. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who suffer from poverty, terrorism, and racism, and religious persecution, for the deliverance of, from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. In the, in the communion, communion of St. Martin Martin's of Tours, Tours and of all of the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our lives to Christ our God, to you, to you O Lord our God. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. How shall we respond to God's great love? We shall, we shall love, love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. And we shall love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Page 361. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, 
but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of Christ, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Amen. Father, you, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.